Hello everyone, Simicraft here, and welcome to yet another weekend series here on Simicraft Let's Play. Today we are checking out the game Bad End Theater, which, as I understand, is some sort of like choose your own adventure style thing, presumably with a lot of bad endings. Also, there's content warning. Warning, blood slash gore slash violence, strong language. So, uh, if that's not your jam, leave now. Anyways, uh... Not really much to do here on this main menu screen, so let's get started. Welcome to Bad End Theater. On this stage, we shall be toying with fates. Oh, don't you use a controller here. Well, that's awkward. I'll just... Yeah, I'm sure mouse and keyboard will be fine. You will make many choices, unlocking darker and darker paths, all in order to witness a lovely variety of tragic events. But first, allow me to explain how it works. To begin the tutorial, select whichever doll you'd like. Um, let's see, the demon doll, or the human doll. Uh, and in general, I tend to see myself as a bit more of a human, so we'll be a human doll. You control the human doll. You're a friendly little guy, just minding your own business. How will you interact with the demon doll? Uh, you know, my line of work, I'd say we fight demons. I'll attack it. You killed the demon doll in cold blood. How ruthless. You found your very first bad ending. But don't worry, the story need not end here. Let's reset the stage and try again. This time, try controlling the other doll. I guess I'll be the demon doll. You control the demon doll. You're a fierce looking guy, just minding your own business. How will you interact with the human doll? I guess we'll play nice. You try to be friends this time, but the human attacks and kills you. This is all because you chose to attack in the first round. Are the mechanics become clear? Oh! So, we are going to like play as each participant in the story. Interesting. Okay. I'm liking this, this is already layering on some mechanics that seem a bit more advanced than just standard choose your own adventure slash visual novel gameplay, okay. Now that you know how the story goes, you can set the doll's behavior in advance. As you just saw, these behaviors will automatically be set to what you chose during your last playthrough. But now you can turn each one on or off without having to replay from that doll's perspective. Yes, my theater actually doubles as a puzzle game. Now try turning the doll's behaviors on and off to see the different outcomes. Okay, human doll. Okay, so human doll's gonna be hostile, demon doll's not gonna be wicked. So if we want... Here, so we'll be the... Human. You control the human doll. You're a friendly little guy, just minding your own business. How will you interact with the demon doll? We're just gonna play nice. You and the demon doll are able to set aside your differences and become friends. End tutorial. Okay. Alright, I think I get what's going on here. Do you understand how to play? Uh, yeah, I get it. This game saves your progress automatically, so just relax and collect all the bad endings at your own pace. Now, without further ado, let's start the show. Okay, so we can be the hero, the maiden, the underling, or the overlord. Except that, are they all locked? Oh, okay, behaviors, gotcha. I mean, let's start with the hero. That seems like a pretty standard place to start. You are the hero! You like to think of yourself as a pretty reliable and swell guy. Your life has been rather ordinary aside from the occasional heroic adventures fighting evil monsters and whatnot. You are told a maiden from your village has been kidnapped and is likely being held captive at the nearby Demon Overlord's castle. Who even puts a village right next to where an entire demon army hangs out? You don't get it. You're happy to protect the townspeople, though. You are born to play this role. You head off on your adventure to rescue the maiden. But demon soldiers block your path. You could kill them to gain experience. I mean, we're not gonna flee like a coward, are we? We will bravely slaughter the evil creatures. You make quick work of the vile creatures who stood in your way. You feel much stronger now. After a long trek, you make it to the castle's front gates. You are faced with an army of demons that all look very intimidating. 
There's no way to sneak past these monsters if you want to reach the Overlord. Okay, um... We could be dutiful or diplomatic. Uh, I mean... Let us ask if they'll let us in. You attempt to explain why you've come, but the monster before you is eyeing you with suspicion. They can't help but notice the demon blood from earlier. You haven't had the chance to wash off yet. Whoops. You have no choice but to fight the army in self-defense. Oh well, more experience points for you. You make your way through the castle, fending off all the demons that stand in your way. The Overlord appears, demanding to know what the hell you're doing, murdering all of her soldiers. You get straight to the point and ask her where the maiden is. She feigns ignorance, a convincing act, but you won't be fooled. If the maiden isn't here, then what happened to her? You can see only one answer. The Overlord definitely captured her. In fact, it's possible she's already been devoured. Thinking about that poor maiden's fate fills you with hatred. You fight the Overlord with everything you've got. You've become strong from the hordes of demons you took down before this final battle. The Overlord is almost no match for you. You cut her to pieces. The Overlord has fallen. You breathe a sigh of relief, but your job is not yet finished. You search the castle wall, or you search the castle. Unfortunately, you find no sign of the maiden within its walls. It's just as you suspected. She must have already been devoured. You feel hollow. A great evil has been vanished from this world. But what does that matter if you are too weak to save someone? You stand alone amidst the carnage and ponder what it means to be a hero. You return to the Overlord's remains and wrap her head in your cape to bring back to the village. Surely your great victory will be celebrated. Failed Hero End Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so we beat the game. Hope you all enjoyed. <laughs> I guess we'll see what's going on from some other POVs. Let's reset the stage. Okay, so we've got a dutiful hero. Slaughters all the demons. Good to know. Uh, now let's see, where is the maiden? Where did this maiden get off to? You are a maiden! You live in a peaceful village next to a spooky demon overlord's castle. You are told that you are fated to be captured by the Overlord one day because you are a beautiful young girl. Demon Overlords apparently love capturing those. You think of how you haven't heard of that actually happening to anyone, but maybe the demons just haven't been given the opportunity. Who knows? You're in church. You pray to your god, asking why you have been born into this role of maiden. You respect the divine plan at all, but you're really just curious as to what the point of it is. You are impatient. Meeting a demon actually sounds pretty gosh darn exciting. Maybe you'd understand your role better if you were to just hurry up and get captured already. You leave a note and venture forth to find a demon. Just, to, you know, see what happens. Not long into your little adventure, a demon underling appears before you. It looks pretty scary. Um, I, I think this maiden is going to introduce herself. You tell the demon your name and explain that you're a maiden from the village. The demon suddenly jumps you and starts biting. A lot. How painful. This plan of yours was completely stupid, you think. Why couldn't you have been more patient? Why did you go looking for trouble? You aren't angry or anything, of course. This was all your fault for trusting a demon not to devour you on sight. This is your punishment for questioning fate, you guess. Bit by bit, you are swallowed by the demon until you are no more. Consumed Maiden Ending Well, that could have gone better. Let us reset the stage yet again. Okay, I mean, let's see what's going on from the underling's perspective. You are a demon underling in service to the Overlord. You aren't particularly strong, but not particularly weak either. That's what your friends tell you. Your job is to guard the castle and keep humans away. It's unbearably boring. Heroes rarely come all the way here to challenge the Overlord anyway. It's out of standing in one place staring into nothing. You feel like you're going to go crazy if you don't get a break. You decide to ask the Overlord for a day off. She gives you an earful about responsibility and unquestioning obedience. You wait for her to finish her lecture before returning to your post. What does she know about anything? Who made her the boss of everyone? You complain about the Overlord to your friends. They agree that she is kind of a snob and totally deserves to be kicked off her throne. You only wanted to vent your frustrations, but the conversation somehow turned into an assassination plot. 
you should probably steer this in a reasonable direction. Uh, yeah, let's let's not overthrow her. That's that seems like it's inviting some uh, trouble in our lives. You tell your friends you were totally not serious about the whole thing. You're actually cool with the status quo. After all, life must be pretty dang good if the only thing you have to complain about is that you live so comfortably. There's nothing to do. The others nod, but don't seem convinced. You say a coup d'etat would be more effort than it's worth. But you're still going to be a rebel and sneak out of the castle. Your friends praise your mischievous ways. The change of atmosphere excites you. You spend some time rolling around in the grass, wild and free. As you make your way along the path to the nearby human village, you encounter a maiden. She greets you and says she has a favor to ask. You consider your options. That's you could gobble her up or hear her out. Um... I guess we'll hear her out. I mean, we already kind of know what gobbling her up does. You're in a good mood today. You are rather curious about what the maiden has to say. Humans don't usually talk to you, so this is kind of exciting. You hadn't guessed it would even be possible to understand each other before now. The maiden is going on and on about some kind of destiny she's trying to fulfill. The bottom line, from what you gather, is that she wants you to take her to the Overlord. Sounds like it should be interesting. Besides, you have nothing better to do. Satisfied with your day out, you take the maiden back to the castle and present her to the Overlord. The Overlord asks where you found this maiden, knowing full well that you left the castle when you weren't supposed to. You apologize for disobeying her, but hope that the maiden is an interesting enough present that you may be forgiven. The Overlord, the overlord nods and says everything's cool as long as you always listen to her from now on. You're impressed with what an easygoing boss she is. You mention how you can't believe you and your friends even considered overthrowing her. She gives you a look, and you say, That was just a joke, of course. She smiles and dismisses you. You decide it's about time for a nap. After a few hours of sleep, you're rudely awakened by the sounds of battle. You emerge from your room to find that a hero has slaughtered many of your friends and work associates. What a jerk! What does a skull mean? Does it mean I'm gonna die if I do that? I think this iteration of the, uh... Underling, I think he'd save himself. You look around at the lifeless forms of those you've known as far back as you can remember. You feel glad to not be in their shoes. You also feel guilty to be thinking that as you flee the castle. Until you remember your role, not as an underling, but as a demon. This kind of thing is expected of you. Maybe you'll start a new life. Far away from any humans, or demons. Where you'll live peacefully, alone, in some deep, dark forest somewhere. Deserter Underling Ending Well... Better ending than what the Maiden got, at least. Let us reset the stage yet again. So can you select- oh, okay, you can select multiple, gotcha. Alright, uh, Overlord, let's see what you got. You are the Overlord. You live in a castle surrounded by your demon servants. It's a pretty cushy life, you think. Except for those pesky humans who keep killing members of your army. There's even a role called Hero, whose whole purpose in life is just to dethrone you. What's their deal anyway? You've actively avoided pissing off the humans in hopes they'll leave you and your army alone, but they never do. You're still new to the whole Overlord thing? If you're being quite honest with yourself, you don't really understand the politics of it. But, you remind yourself, everyone is just doing their best to fulfill their roles. You won't let them bait you into being the evil overlord they expect. You think you're pretty cool and mature to hold yourself to the higher standard like that. One of your underlings walks into your room, totally interrupting your thoughts about how awesome you are. They're saying something about how boring it is to stand in one place guarding the castle all the time, especially since no one ever comes here anyway. You see their point, but the way they're whining about it kind of bothers you. What to do with this underling? Hmm? I mean, we're nice demon boss, we are nice demon boss, we'll get them- give the underling the day off. You tell them to go take a break from the stifling castle atmosphere, and refresh their dark soul. A day off should be fine every once in a while. They thank you and happily scurry off to do who knows what. You have nothing better to do today, so you decide to nap for a little while. Being the Overlord sure is great. 
You wake to a knock on your door. The underling from earlier brought back some company. It's a maiden from the nearby human village. She says her role is to be captured by you. The maiden then goes on to say that she's been getting very impatient thinking about her impending capture, so she's come here to speed things along. You appreciate her honesty, but regret to inform her you never had any plans to capture any humans. She seems very disappointed by this. Perhaps I'm not performing my role well enough. How can I become more like a more maiden-like? You don't really understand the question. You think this world puts way too much focus on destiny and junk. Just go home and stop worrying about it, you tell her. Or, you know what, maybe consider see can you get like one of your eyes like extremely like injured and corrupted, okay? You know, that might do it too. That's a reference to Elden Ring. The maiden seems to be having a hard time wrapping her head around this. She insists that she stay and talk to you more. You feel warm inside as she looks into your eyes. This is the first time a human has looked at you without contempt. You wonder what to say. Eh, uh, tell her she'd better go home. I mean, this whole, like, getting captured thing, I like, guess it's, it's cliche. You'd love to have all the conversations in the world with your new friend, but having a human girl here will definitely cause trouble. You put on your mean face and tell her to get lost. But the maiden turns out to be very stubborn. You don't want to hurt her. But you also really want her to leave, in case something bad happens? This whole situation is just asking for trouble, you think. Against your better judgement, you let her hang out for a little while longer. You enjoy a nice long chat with her, sharing stories about your kind. She expresses her surprise that demons are not at all what she expected them to be. You're glad that she seems to have an open mind about these kinds of things. You also bring up how you always instruct your army to avoid humans, as not to agitate them, and get heroes sent out after you. That explains why the people of my village have been left unharmed. It's because of your orders, isn't it? We are very grateful. You're surprised to hear her. Thank you. You've always thought of humans to be violent and unreasonable. That's why your servants are always getting killed, despite your efforts to leave them alone. But this maiden is different. You joke that maybe you've been lying to her this whole time, and that you were actually super evil all along. The maiden laughs at that, saying she wouldn't mind being held captive here. The people in her village are a little exhausting at times, she says. You can't tell if she's into you or not. You notice the sounds of battle have started ringing through your castle's halls. The maiden is getting nervous, but you reassure her it's only your underlings roughhousing. No big deal. You know it's probably a hero, but you don't want to upset the maiden by telling her that. Your army will take care of it. It isn't long before the hero bursts into your room. But he shouldn't have made it here. Why didn't they stop him? The hero just stands there, unsure of himself. He is covered in demon blood. As the maiden speaks to him, trying to explain the situation, you move past the hero and out the door. You're not thinking clearly. Seeing your servants' bodies and pieces all strewn about your castle has really taken it out of you. That hero did this? There's so much blood! Why? Did he come for the maiden? Did he think she needed rescuing? There's no one for this hero to save here! There's never any harm to anyone! You're just talking to her! Why has it turned out like this? The hero starts bobbing, or babbling insincere apologies and excuses, realizing his wrongdoing, but you are far beyond hearing that kind of bullshit. You have had it with these humans, always murdering your servants for no reason. You can no longer hold yourself back and lash out at the hero. When you regain control, there is nothing left of the hero. The maiden has fled in terror. You are alone. Wrathful Overlord and... Hmm. Interesting. Let us reset the stage yet again.